Zeiss exits stage left. Why is the photo industry dying? I'm glad you asked. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness of the lap song, so good, so good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a photo day. We're gonna be talking about Zeiss, but then also a more higher level of what is going on with the photographic community and the photographic industry as a whole. This downturn that's been going on for quite some time. A lot of you out there would be like, oh yeah, Joe, you know, it had to do with COVID and you know, in 2019, it really just hurt them. No, the answer to that is no, this has been going on for many years. I wanna get into it a little bit with you guys and give you my perspective of doing this for like 15 plus years, covering the industry, moving about from one side of the country to the other side, from PPE to Photo Plus Expo to all the different expos and covering the movers and shakers and interviewing the CEOs and COOs and CFOs and all of the rest of the engineers from all of these companies and give you my thoughts on it. So I was reading an article over on the photo blogger and I wanna share some portions of it with you. And then once again, have a conversation. I wanna know your thoughts on this because I think it's very important. So to start out with, if you don't know who Zeiss is, then you've probably been under a rock or you're brand new to the photographic industry. Basically, Carl Zeiss, created a lab or a workshop back in 1846, 47, I think it was 46. And this was in Germany. And this lab, he brought in all of the practical as well as theoretical opticians, the lens crafters, the lens makers, all right? To redesign like every aspect of optical instrument production. And this is what he did. Remember, back then, all lenses were handcrafted. They were hand ground to amazing perfection. Remember, this is way back in the mid 1800s when he started this. Now, Zeiss, according to what I was reading today, is exiting stage left, is leaving the photographic community. Now, they've been in this transition for quite some time, if you know it or not. They've really been concentrating on on cinema lenses, cinema glass, because that's where the money is. There's no reason to make a product and then make nothing from it. It just doesn't make sense. It's all about making money if you are a business. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of the camera manufacturers have went away from the point and shoots, but I'll get into that before the end of this video. Anyways, before I get into this article, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not, they're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so and then click this little button over here. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately, immediately, if not sooner, <laughs> according to YouTube, but it doesn't happen. <sighs> YouTube, fix it, fix it. Finally, if you need a VPN or possibly faster internet speeds or more reliable internet, check out Speedify. I've been using them for about a month and a half. It's been working out really great. And I use them for all of my live shows. So if you haven't been here live with me, having a conversation or a chit chat with me, do so every Friday about 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join me. Anyways, the folks over there gave me a promo code so you can try out their service. The promo code is jchristina, or if you just wanna click a link down below there'll be a link which is jchristina.com forward slash speed once again jchristina.com forward slash speed that will automatically give you the 20 percent off so check them out anyways let's get into this article and then as I always say i want to know your thoughts i'm just a talking head here giving you my thoughts but most importantly down below in the comment area that's where all the goodness happens on this channel the article starts out with, you should know the company, which was once a juggernaut for lenses, only focuses on the cinema world these days. In fact, they've done so for several years now. That's what I was saying. This has been going on. This transition has been going on for quite some time behind the scenes. It continues, typically the photo blogger would reach out to the brand for confirmation, but our Zeiss rep have been long silent. We haven't heard from them since the pandemic. 
Zeiss has discontinued all of their lenses and filters in the photography world. That means the Zeiss Badis, the Milvis, as well as the Otis and the Luxia lenses are discontinued. The last time Zeiss announced anything worth discussing was in 2019 when they revealed the Ventum lenses for the Sony E-mount drones. In 2022, they announced the Kubrick's famous lens had returned home to the Zeiss Museum. However, no new products for purchase specifically for photographers have been advertised. For many years, everything was made in Germany until they started outsourcing the manufacture of their lenses to Japan. Candidly speaking, I don't think anyone should be surprised. Several years ago, our Zeiss rep told us that the brand would be exiting the photo industry slowly as they would make more money in the cinema world, not the photo world. This is why Zeiss has continued to create lenses for movie and cinema. Other brands have found similar success. Along with Tokina, Zeiss hasn't been heard from for a while. Tokina was allegedly rebranding Viltrox lenses at one point. This begs the question, is there a problem with photographers? Well, there is a few. Japanese manufacturers tend to copy one another too much and don't truly innovate against smartphones. That is a factual statement. Panasonic, Sony, and Canon dominate the cinema world, but in the stills world, the kings are Canon, Sony, and Nikon. The innovators are more like Panasonic, Sony, Nikon, Fujifilm, and Leica. The bigger problem is that manufacturers lean so heavily into the scientific and clinical world of photography and not enough into what gets to our heartstrings. That is also very factual. Like the watch, the camera was thrown to the side because of the smartphone, but the watch industry adapted and became luxury based while also embracing various audiences. Also factual. The camera world instead leaned harder into science. In some cases, they've done an incredible job. In other cases, they keep giving customers and passionate photographers a reason not to want to buy a new camera or lens. Once again, this is very important. That's exactly what they're doing. Just simply iterating the same old, same old over and over. Professionals alike also are pretty happy with their purchase and are relying more on ways to fight against problems with AI imagery. But manufacturers haven't implemented a way to battle this the way they have adapted quickly to make their devices work as streaming web cameras. That is truth. They have not looked into AI at all. What can they do to mitigate this? But as soon as COVID hit, they immediately jumped into the webcam thing. What software can we write to allow the folks to use our camera as a webcam? All right, and this is what they did immediately. But they haven't even touched AI at all. And I think this is a major problem. I'll get into that in just a second. Let me finish the article. If the end of Zeiss is true, then it is one we've known as coming for a while. The photo industry isn't on its deathbed. It just needs a desperate evolution. You know, I've been looking at this industry for quite some time. Like I said, I've been doing this for 15 plus years, actually covering the industry and shooting as a professional photographer, as a video maker for over two decades. OK, so I've been doing this for a little while and interviewing all of these movers and shakers and CEOs and engineers and all the rest of them, you get to know what people are doing or what the manufacturers are doing or what is going on, let's say, behind the underpinnings of what's going on. And I think this article is 100% correct. I think what has been going on is this lackluster, let's say, or lack of innovation. And they do not move forward. And like they were saying, watches did move forward. They said, you know what? We cannot compete with an iPhone as a watch but we can make the watch more luxurious, let's say, and increase the price. And what has happened is, is that the manufacturers of these cameras have done the same. They have discontinued the point and shoots, all of the cheaper cameras, and decided to go and create more expensive cameras only for professionals or pro-ams. And that is not the answer. I mean, that is an answer for a short period of time. But as you get less and less professionals, because you get less and less people in the photo industry with point and shoots, discovering photo, right? Less professionals mean less people buying your cameras, your expensive cameras. 
it's a problem. You have a 4,000, 5,000, now we're seeing cameras that are like $6,000 for a body. That is ludicrousy. If we were to look at watches, for example, if you were to go to a high-end event or a gala or something like that, right? Are you going to be more inclined to wear your Apple Watch or would you be more inclined to wear a Rolex or a Cartier or possibly an Omega, right? Probably you're going to wear one of those high-end, just beautiful pieces of art in comparison to an Apple Watch that's more scientific, as they were talking about in this article. It's more for, let's say, calculating my steps or for monitoring my health or that type of thing. An Apple Watch is fantastic for that. I would use it in a gym, for example. But once again, going to a high-end ball or a gala or something like that, I'm most likely not going to use an Apple Watch. I'd much rather wear a Rolex or an Omega or something like that because you will now be perceived a little bit different. And this is what they think or the camera industry thinks that you as a photographer is going to do. But you're not. You're not going to buy a high-end camera just to hold it as your Omega and be like, look what I got. Look at my beautiful camera. No one gives a shit anymore. Okay. They only want to know the pictures. What is the result? I don't care what you use. Okay. Use an old camera. Use a new camera. I don't even care. Matter of fact, as we're talking about Zeiss and the old cameras in comparison to the new, this right here is what one of their first cameras looked like. This is a Bellows camera. This is almost a hundred years old. This is a Zeiss icon camera. Matter of fact, if we push this button, we can actually pull out this Bellows so you can see what it looks like. You see that guys? All right. This is, this is what the cameras once looked like. This is amazing. Matter of fact, I've actually taken pictures with this camera of my family and they came out fantastic. All right. So, and this is once again, almost a 100 year old camera. But the difference is, is you're going to look at this and if someone's carrying that around, are you going to look at them any different as someone that's carrying around a $6,000 Sony camera or Nikon? Kind of, sort of, maybe, maybe not. Professional photographers today are trying to figure out how can they break away from the norm and give, for example, their clients something that doesn't look like everyone else's cut and paste. And this is what's been going on with those cameras. It is an iteration, a duplication, a mindless creation of the next version. There's nothing new there. The innovation is not there. It's lacking. It's simply iteration is not inspiring. And this is why the writer was talking about how people are not interested in buying the new camera because the camera that you have is just simply good enough. And the output looks just like everyone else's. There's nothing new. There's nothing just, just tasty there, right? When you take a picture, for example, with an old camera like this, the quality is not going to be quite as good, right? But what you create with it is unbelievably beautiful. Why? Because it has a certain aesthetic to it. It just looks just amazingly different. I do think that the camera manufacturers that are trying to increase their price, to increase the amount of profits, right? By selling less cameras, but selling for more money, let's say, is going to be short lived. Right now, we're seeing a little boost in the amount of earnings from the camera manufacturers, but there's still a downturn in the number of cameras sold. This is not that many people buying new cameras. Going down the watch manufacturer's path, just simply raising the prices and creating this luxury item is a failure. And the reason is, like I said before, no one is going to hold on to their camera as if it is some type of aesthetic, some type of piece of art that they have that they are showing off, like an Omega or a Rolex. It's just simply not that. No one cares about your camera. They just simply don't. And if someone is able to create an image with their iPhone that is as good or let's say close to as good as something that's produced with a $6,000 professional DSLR or mirrorless camera, no one's going to care. They're not going to ask you, oh, did you use the brand new Z8 for that? 
No one cares. They don't care. And if you said, no, I shot it with my iPhone, they'd be like, wow, that looks really good. It's just not the way it used to be. I think the only people that will help out that type of industry is like a Leica fan. Someone that buys a Leica camera for three times the cost of another camera just because it's a Leica. And now they have the name and they feel really warm and cozy for having a Leica camera in comparison to a Nikon or a Canon or a Panasonic or a Sony or whoever. Okay, so they just feel really good by having that Leica and paying so much more. It is what it is. I really do think that the industry or the industry leaders, at least one of them, needs to spend a little time and figure out the problem that we as photographers are having with AI. Because going forward, we are not gonna know what is real and what is Memorex. Even after 100 recordings, you'll wonder, is it live or is it Memorex? What is real and what is AI? And that is a major problem with trust. How do you know if a photograph that you're seeing is an actual photograph or an AI representation of that item or that thing or that place, that location, whatever? How do you know? And if one of these manufacturers were able to create a means of stamping or watermarking or meta tagging or implementing some type of encrypted metadata into the images that stay there, I think that this would be very powerful to be able to know what is AI and what is a true photograph. Now, I'm not talking about photo manipulation after the fact in some type of photo editor. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the difference between a photo that is taken within a camera and a photo that is 100% created by AI. And I really do think that that is the future. We need to know what the difference is. Once again, how do you know what's real and what is not? So this is my opinion covering the industry for the last 15 years and being in the industry creating photo as well as video production for the last two decades plus, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? What do you think is the problem that we're having with the photo industry as of right now? Do you think AI is going to be an issue? Do you think I might be onto something and one of these manufacturers could create something that changes everything? And then that company can sell that IP, that intellectual property to all of the rest of the manufacturers so that there is one baseline to know what is real and what is not. Also, what do you think about Zeiss exiting stage left the photo community? No more Zeiss filters, no more Zeiss lenses, nothing for photo, only cinema. And how long that will keep going, we don't know. But they've been around for 177 years. I don't wanna see them go belly up, but there's been so many companies that just simply can't do it anymore. And once again, the reason is because they just continue to iterate, 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 and not innovate. There needs to be, or there is a desperate need for evolution. They need to innovate. And this has just simply not been the case for many years now. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be great. Don't forget to subscribe, click this button, do all of those things. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.